Previously, we found out how to calculate really the, the basic skills you need to calculate all the needed ingredients to figure out how to determine the voltage anywhere in a basic transmission line circuit in the case where uh, the where the signal is DC and all the transmission lines were initially unloaded. So let's just redraw our our situation here where we have a load voltage a source generator that turns on at t equals zero uh, this is a length d and we have a source impedance of zg a transmission line with a characteristic impedance of z naught and a load of zl and we want to know so we have the voltage at the load and uh, we also have the input voltage um, some of the key characteristics that we have so we remember that the input voltage is going to be the which is also the initial forward wave that's going in is going to be equal to vg of z naught over z naught plus zg a voltage divider between z naught and zg and uh, the initial input current is just going to be which we'll also designate as i plus is going to be equal to V plus over Z naught. And then on the other side, we also saw that uh, as we go from Z naught to ZL, uh, you're going to experience a reflection. So when that happens, you're, you're going to have your, your first reflection, uh, V minus is going to be equal to gamma V plus, where gamma is equal to, uh, let's say it all together, uh, z new minus old over new plus old. So we have our initial V plus. So in terms of key parameters that we're going to use moving forward, we have our initial V plus, uh, I plus for the initial wave. And we also have uh, gamma, uh, I should specify, this is gamma at the load. And uh, separately, if we wanted to find the voltage at the load, it's just going to be equal to uh, 1 plus gamma of V plus. Now, one more thing to keep in mind. So you're going to have a reflected wave. The positive wave gets dissipated. The load voltage gets dissipated across the load. And you're going to have this reflected wave that's going back. Uh, oh, I might as well also add that uh, once you have the reflected wave, the reflected current is going to be equal to uh, the V minus divided by Z naught. But again, I'm just going to keep using a different color and using the mental image of me crying so that you'll remember. But when it's a negative wave, don't forget to add a negative sign when you're relating the voltage and the current if it's going the negative Z direction. Now, uh, it now goes back and uh, and heads towards a generator, when it hits the generator, it's also going to experience a reflection if Z naught and ZG are mismatched. So on the generator side, so this is on the load side, on the generator side, you're going to, you're going to apply the same kind of calculation. So uh, you're going to have, you're going to have uh, this wave go over and then it's going to bounce back. So this negative wave is going to bounce back. And when it goes forward, we're going to call this V++ because it's, it's the second forward going wave uh, that has been through a couple of reflections. So on the generator side, the same principle applies. So V++ is going to be equal to gamma G of V minus. And similarly, uh, I++ is going to be equal to um, is going to be equal to V plus plus divided by Z naught. And gamma G in this case is the same, same formula, just different numbers. Just remember uh, nu, in this case, it's going from Z naught to ZG. So it's nu ZG minus old Z naught over nu plus old. Okay, so let's, Let's just highlight some key quantities. So 
we're going to have a reflection coefficient, we're going to have an input voltage, and we're going to have a reflection coefficient on the generator end. And really, with this, uh, you can you can get an idea. This will enable you to calculate uh, the voltage at any given point at any given time. And so that, that's the main thing that you need to be able to do walking away. Now, one way that we're going to use to express this is what we're, we're calling a bounce diagram. So if we want to get really funky and think about it, this is this bounce diagram basically represents the the space-time continuum of a one-dimensional space. So we have uh, we have the the distance, the space quantity going this way. So this direction is z, where this is the this is the generator, this is the load. So this distance here is d, and then as a function of time, time will go down this way. And we're going to call the time that it takes to make a one-way trip across the transmission line capital T, which is going to be equal to d divided by the propagation velocity. So d divided by the propagation velocity. Now what, what this is going So once you have the basic quantities here um, in basically this all of this basic situation, uh, one of the things I need to do is, uh, depending on how how long you have to, how many cycles you have to go, depending on what the problem asks you for, how long you have to go, uh, we can label out where 2t, 3t, and 4t is. Now initially, at t equals 0, your wave is going to launch this way. And again, as we propagate downwards, that's, that represents the passage of time. So at, at time big T, uh, you reach the load end. And then you experience a reflection. So now you're going in the negative Z direction. And then at T equals 2T, at time 2T, you get back to the generator. And at that point, uh, you reflect off the generator, and there's another reflected wave that goes towards the load, and then reaches there at 3t, and then there's another reflection that goes down at 4t, and so on and so forth. And now the actual voltage uh, values that correspond with this line is going to be, so initially going in, that's going to be your V plus. And then once you get your reflection, that's going to be equal to v minus, which is equal to gamma L of v plus. And then it reflects off the generator. So now you have v plus plus, which is going to be equal to gamma G, gamma L of the initial input wave. And then you reflect off the generator again, uh, the load again. So I have v minus minus, which is going to be equal to gamma G, gamma L, but now you have this extra gamma L going in of V plus, and now you have V plus plus plus, which is going to be equal to, you have another reflection off the load, so it's gamma squared, gamma L squared, V plus, and so on and so forth. So now um, you know what the voltage is at any situation at any point in time. Again, this is the voltage in T. So the first thing that you need to be able to do is, if I were to give you a circuit, uh, be able to draw this bounce diagram and clearly calculate what the voltage is going to be at any point. Now, if you also need to be able to find out what the, what the voltage is as a function of time. So one way to view that is, um, is it really, your, your key tool is being able to think in the perspective of the, of the little dot that you place in different quantities here. So what one of the ways that I like to visualize this is um, to have a third dimension coming out of the page. So the dimension coming out of the page, that's going to be your voltage. So right now, 
if I think of this, in, these are basically little triangle slices of different elevations. And the ch every time you cross over one of these purple lines, your elevation changes by this voltage here that's in purple. So uh, initially, uh, you turn on the voltage, and the, at the load end, you don't see it because news hasn't reached you yet. So um, at, at this chunk of the triangle, this entire chunk of the triangle here has, is basically at zero volts. So depending on what time and uh, what place you're talking about, if uh, you're talking, if you land somewhere in this triangle, uh, the answer is that that point of the transmission line is at zero volts. Then um, this this initial incoming wave hits you, right? So so once uh, if as you move down in time, if you cross over this purple line, now you're at voltage V plus. So I'm going to do this. And what that means is this triangle slice here is at elevation zero. This triangle slice here is at elevation V plus. Um, if I if I'm if my little little person is standing over here, what this means is that this V plus signal has arrived, but the reflected wave has not hit me yet. If the reflected wave hits me, if I'm standing over here and this perp and this and uh, eventually I cross over this purple line, what that does is it adds V minus to it. And so now um, this triangle here is a slice of elevation V plus plus V minus. So I'm just gonna circle that. And then again, same deal, you cross over here. So the elevation here is gonna be V plus plus V minus plus V plus plus. And so on and so forth. So as time goes on, you cross this line, it's gonna be V plus plus V minus plus V plus plus V minus minus, and so on and so forth. And uh, so when I'm solving for all of the quantities, I start out by finding these key parameters that I need. And then I draw the bounce diagram, which in, in this situation almost always looks the same. And then I calculate what these actual values corresponding to these thresholds are. So V plus, V minus, V plus plus, V minus minus. And then I calculate, I start adding them all up cumulatively as I go down in time. So I basically assign the, the elevation of these triangle slices by adding the value every time I cross this threshold. Um, so if I cross this threshold as V plus, this triangle is at V plus plus V minus, this triangle is at uh, the previous triangle, but add with an extra factor of V plus plus, and so on and so forth. And one interesting thing to note here is uh, what about here? What's the elevation over here? Well, the elevation over here at the load has this line and this line simultaneously intersecting it. So what, what the elevation over here would be would be the sum of the two, so V plus plus V minus, which is how we define the load voltage to be. So by calculating these basic quantities and drawing this out, you really have uh, you you really have all the information to provide the voltage at any point, any time. Uh, if I give you a point in time, you just find out where that is, put a little dot there, and read it off. Uh, the more likely scenario is that I might ask you um, to plot the voltage at a location as a function of time, or um, I might ask you to plot uh, the transmission line, what the voltage is across the entire transmission line at a point in time. So the way to do that would be once you have this 3D picture of these different triangles of different elevations visualized, all you're doing is in the case of if you're holding, if you're looking at the voltage at a particular point in the transmission line as a function of time, is you are taking a cross section and plotting it. So if I were to plot that, uh, let's just say that this is, I don't know, a, a quarter of the distance. What you would end up needing to do is, is as a function of time, and this is the voltage, you can see that um, you start out at nothing, and then it bumps up to V plus, and then it goes to the second value. So you're going to have V plus, so you're going to start at zero, and you're going to get to V plus. And then let's just say the negative wave is 
uh, let's just say v minus is a negative value, so then it'll go down a little bit. Um, it'll go down a little bit over here, and then over here it'll go back up. So go back up for v plus plus. Actually, uh, it's just. And then over here at this point, it's going to go. It's going to reflect off the generator and change again. And so what you'll see, so you can you can plot this cross section by visualizing uh, what it looks like as you go through. And note that since we define the distance d, this as distance uh, one unit of d, and this capital T is you know one t, two t, three t. These lines effectively have a slope of one. So if this is a quarter d, then this is a quarter t. So this time here is at one quarter t. And then similarly, if you if you follow that that slope of equal to one, you can work out that this time here is going to be three quarter t. And then over here, this is going to be this is going to be five fourths t, and so on and so forth. Um, and then. Lastly, uh, as I as I mentioned before, uh, the other thing that you could do is uh, take a cross section of the transmission line at a particular time. You'll see that if we just assume that this is still a quarter d as we drew here, so some kind of transition happens at quarter d. This is now a function of z, and the vertical axis is still v. And you can see that it, when at the beginning you're at one value which has experienced uh, this, newly, this uh, newly reflected wave off the generator. But then once you propagate further down, um, you'll, you'll still be at this other value where uh, it hasn't quite seen this yet. So you're still kind of living in the past, so to speak. So the value here would be v plus plus v minus plus v plus 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 v minus minus. Uh, if I just call that uh, x. Uh, this value here would be x plus v plus plus plus, so which is the value here. All right. So again, summarize uh, the basic process is you calculate the basic parameters, the input voltage, uh, the gamma for at the load and the generator side. You draw this bounce diagram. You label what the voltages are, which uh, translate to you calculate and label what the voltages are, which translates to the actual change in elevation every time you cross the line. And then you go ahead and um, draw out what the, write out what a the actual elevations are for these triangle slices. And then if the problem asks you to take a slice of it as a function of uh, time or as a function of distance, you then do so and using your new uh, elevation visualization, you can then draw out and plot what the voltage is as a function of time or distance or location.